name is Margaret Adele and welcome to another indie book review. This one might be a little bit short because the book was pretty short, but today I am reviewing In the Bedroom of Medusa by Megan Cubed. This is a monster romance novella, a sapphic monster romance novella, which makes it that much better. Uh, when I saw this on Twitter that the author was offering arcs, I was like, well, yes, obviously. And it did not disappoint. Now, like I mentioned before, this is very short. I, I actually had to message the author to ask how long it was because because the copy I got uh, did not have page numbers, but it is about 70 pages. So really quick read. Uh, but this is all about a woman that gets hired to be a live-in companion for this mysterious woman that always wears a veil. And is there something moving under that veil? And always wears black. And I mean, it doesn't insult your intelligence. The protagonist figures it out like really quick. Uh, she knows that the, this mysterious woman, uh, Lady Barascas, is at least a Gorgon, if not that Gorgon. Um, but Evelyn is not bothered. This, <laughs> this book does not bother with the demure, oh no, non-human. She's like, oh, hey. <laughs> Which, if you're the kind of person that's reading a monster romance, same. So, uh, this book moves very quickly. It has a lot of heat, very high heat. It is erotica, uh, so be prepared for that. And I mentioned in the written review that this book uh, works for people who maybe have heard about monster romances but haven't fully jumped in yet or don't really know where to begin um, because the sex scenes do involve the non-human appendages, a.k.a her hair, um, but in this instance, they are not sentient snakes. They are not their own beings. They are appendages that are just a given part of her body that, that she controls. You will not have to worry about, like, the snakes doing their own thing, but they are included. However, uh, the vast majority of the intimacy is done through standard sapphic means for the most part. So, if you are still dipping your toes into the genre, this is a good one to pick. Um, these scenes were very properly steamy. Uh, some light, very light, like incredibly light uh, BDSM. And what I mean by that is that like there's a blindfold. Uh, Evelyn calls her mistress and Demetria like says like good girl or, or whatever. It, it's very light, very soft. So if that's not your kink, or if, again, you haven't done a lot with those kind of books, it's going to be a good pick. It's book is, is a good pick for beginners. And I swear I mean that in a positive way. I swear I am not being like, this is for beginners. But no, this is a good way to ease yourself into either of those genres if you have not done a lot with them before. Now, I was a little bit nervous going into it because I struggle a lot with novellas feeling like novels that are missing pieces and a lot of cases when I go to read a, a, a novella I'm like oh there's like 10 other things I wanted to see expanded on and this book uh gets around that by basically not having a lot of things being an issue that oftentimes would have been an issue in another book uh for example um again Evelyn does not have to like come to grips with the fact that her her new mistress is a gorgon uh she does not struggle with her mistress uh, lavishing all these fancy things on her. She does not feel the need to demure and insist that, um, like, that, <laughs> that she's, she shouldn't accept all these fancy things. She does not have the, what seems to be obligatory, well, yes, technically she works as an escort, but actually she's never had sex with any of her clients, which I hate because that is like, if you're gonna have the character be a sex worker, just to have her be a sex worker, please don't try to demure and, throw purity culture nonsense on this and this book didn't have that so a lot of the angsty character development parts that Evelyn would have had weren't a problem in here now that does come with the side effect of Evelyn wasn't nearly as interesting as Demetria which low-key is to be expected in a monster romance because when you have a human and an ancient creature like the human's always going to lose out on that comparison, but I really loved the nuance in Demetria. She was very formal and a little bit standoffish. You know, she's 
completely covered head to toe. You never fully see her until like near the end. And she is, is very interested or I guess you could say preoccupied with the politeness of polite society. Uh, but she was also very warm and affectionate. So it was very kind of like strict but loving mother vibes. Um, there was also a lot of other side characters in the form of the house staff. Um, neither, none of them really got a lot of depth except for maybe one maid, but even that, again, there's only so much character development you can fit in 70 pages. Um, but there are a couple uh, side characters that are trans and admittedly the obligatory bitchy person I could take or leave um, but that part at least was semi-interesting. And, of course, you have the lovely ending. This is a romance, H-E-A guaranteed style. Um, it does take the Medusa myth in a slightly different direction. It's not the exact same story that you might have heard, which could be really nice if you don't want to focus on um, the sexual assault that came with the original Medusa story. Uh, so that would be fun. Um and in general, I just really enjoyed this. This one was nice. I read it in, I think I might have read it under an hour, or at the very least, not much more than an hour. Now, granted, again, I have a naturally fast reading speed, uh, but even as I was, like, stopping to take notes on this, it did not take me much more than an hour. Um, so I would highly suggest this one. Um, obviously, I would also suggest that people, after getting to this one, follow through with more monster romances. And if I remember correctly, I believe the author does this kind of work a lot, at least if not monster romances, then at least paranormal. Um, so I'm definitely going to check out the rest of, of the catalog or the library. But I was really happy to get this one read. Uh, it comes out at the very end of September. Uh, so it is perfect if you want a nice monstery read for the month of Halloween. That'll work. So I gave this book five stars. Very nice. Highly enjoyed it. Uh, now, while I did technically ask for this book, I am still close to unsolicited requests. Unless you are an author whose work I have reviewed before, <laughs> I'm losing faith that I'm ever going to catch up. But uh, for right now, we're going to keep it that way. With nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.